Israeli leaders once came disproportionately from kibbutzim with only 3% of the population. This is no longer the case. To fill that vacuum, midrashim have emerged. We visit one, interview its leaders and members to see what they have to offer. We also discuss Turkey's leader, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, to see what his agenda is. Is he a pragmatist or closet Islamicist? Join us. I'm so pleased you joined me for another episode of Unknown Thought, brought to you by our sponsors, IC Savings Bank, Reddy Honda, and Corey's Clothiers. My guest today, again, Monica <laughs> Parker. I'm not done with you yet. Okay. I have some questions. Monica, survival secrets of a Beverly Hills bag lady. Yes, it's a What's, book I'm writing. What is that? What is that? Well, when we, we went to California 25 years ago, I lived there for a very long time, and we lived in Beverly Hills. And I kept thinking, what's worse, being fat in Beverly Hills or being poor? Hmm. Fat, poor, I knew which was worse, fat. But all the people I knew in that world who were, I want to say, lovely in their defense, but crazy also, completely different way of living. And so I thought, well, I was going to write a book about being a Beverly Hills bag lady. It was sort of a play on being poor. I mean, and believe me, wasn't poor, but next to what I was living next to, poor. So that's where that came from. And plus, I have a lot of tales about those Beverly Hills women. I mean, when my son went to kindergarten, um, one of the women, who, one of the first people I met at the kindergarten class was yelling at her housekeeper for coloring outside the lines. And she said, you know, children, for coloring inside the lines. She said, children color outside the lines. You've got to do better, Lupe. It's <laughs> my introduction. Monica, is it possible to go to LA, be involved in the world of stars, mm -hmm. see the artificiality and perhaps the truth and not lose your soul? Sure. I didn't lose my soul. Um, I, I loved every second of it. It, it. You know, what's really interesting is wherever you live, I don't, it doesn't matter where you live, you find your people. And I found my people, and they are good people and kind people. They had more Botox than other people. They had more things lifted, and they wore clothes that belonged on dead animals. I mean, they were just not, they didn't dress like me. They didn't, I, I don't ascribe to being artificially enhanced, clearly. Um, but they did, and it didn't matter. They were still at the, you know, they bought groceries, they raised children, and they were nice people. But the business of stardom is so banal. I mean, people work so hard, mm -hmm. and most of what they do is completely unknown by their stars or their fans and it's only the glitz and glamour people see. Is it possible to consider your past and your future when you're so stuck in your present? Is it hard to think? You know, everybody who goes to Hollywood goes to be best in show. I mean, it's pretty much like the whatever Winds Windsor, Winchester dog show. I mean, well, it is. It's a, you, you wanna be the best in show. And so you're suddenly surrounded by people who are seemingly on the surface because that's what's valued first there um, by the by the production companies and film companies because they think that's what people want to see and they're right that's what people want to see beautiful people the hard part is when these beautiful people start getting older and then they start getting scared and when they get scared they start doing dramatic things to alter themselves to try and chase their tails to stay young I still think that you can, you're still human. I mean, being a human is still filled with fear and love and hopefully values. And I know some really incredibly nice people. And that's what I'm attracted to. I know some really scuzzy people there too, but I know those people in other places. I don't think it's specific to Hollywood. So that's my defense of Hollywood. Well said. and. Uh I want to go back to the first word you said in this conversation, that is, we went 
to LA. Yes. Who's we? My husband and I went to LA. I was invited to come and write a, a series and I wanted to stay for two weeks and he said, you're not paying attention. This is opportunity knocking. And I said, but I'm really happy in Toronto. I don't need to go anywhere. And he said, no, no, no. This is where you're supposed to be. At least try it. So I did. And 25 years later, and our son was born there and we had a lovely life there. And, you know, I've met Gilles and I think yes. he's, uh, he's fantastic. I haven't met your son, Remy, but I assume the combination he's fantastic. of, yeah, uh, he's got to be fantastic. <laughs> and is it hard? And I'm actually going to ask this in two parts. Is it better that you were married, that you're married to a non-Jewish man because as a Jewish identifying woman, you've constantly been forced to maintain the identity and inform, and I know Gilles is very knowledgeable on these subjects. You became sort of more Jewish, perhaps, by being married to someone non-Jewish than if you were married to a Jewish man and you chose to ignore it. I, I'm sort of postulating the question because I want the answer to be that your efforts have paid off and made you feel better about where you're at. That's what you want me to say? I, I, I could, I'd consider that as a good answer. Okay, but now I'm going to give you my answer. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. I, I did what you told me your grandmother <laughs> would have done or your mother. I was just practicing that. I didn't choose to marry a non-Jew. I fell in love with a non-Jew who fell in love with me. He's French-Canadian. They're not so different. The, it's family first. It's, you know, he's an incredibly good human being. He's a lovely man. I fell in love with the man. How we raised our child or what, whether I became more Jewish, I became more Canadian the longer I lived in America. Hmm. I, maybe I became more Jewish being married to, you know, I, I, I don't know that. I, I am Jewish. You know, I, I'm an adult, so I'm Jewish, married to a non-Jewish man. Our son is a product of both, and he identifies... Jewish because of the world we live in. I mean, Toronto, Los Angeles are by and large Jewish communities. I mean, and in LA, Jewish and Mexican communities, but, but they really are. It doesn't matter. Good. I, I go back to, I don't need to feel attached to something because I am, you know, that I just feel very confident that who I am is in touch with my spirituality, is in touch with my Jewishness is in touch with my non-Jewishness. That's okay for me. Fantastic. That's a better answer than mine. <laughs> Glad you let me answer yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> as we sort of, as we conclude, I want to know what do you tell young men and women about life and about aspiration and about goals and about courage and strength and learning to love yourself? I tell them to be responsible. I tell them that I believe that God is inside us and therefore our behavior, God isn't there, God is here. That's what I believe. And to be, to have godliness is more important than anything else it means to be, you know, those 10 commandments mean something. And if you just behave in that way, you are being godly. So I don't, you know, some people need houses of worship, some, I need a tree that works for me. You know, I really think that it's not very complicated. If you are responsible to the planet and to others and to yourself, you got it covered. That's fantastic. So raising a child, loving a husband, loving what you do, one woman show, writing books. Not bad. What's next? World domination, but I think that's possibly. But but through whatever my creation, I mean, you know, if I were on a desert island, a crayon and possibly tweezers would be all I needed. But that, that I mean, I, I don't know. If you're creative, you've got everything. That's what works for me. So the energy of creativity is what sustains you. You get up in the morning and you're excited to go to the day. I am. I bet I wake up at three in the morning and I'm creating. And then at three in the afternoon, I'm having a nap. I, I, I wake up. I'm a lucky person. I'm a butter side up person. You know, I just, I'm happy. I prefer butter to margarine always. Me too. And Monica, I have to tell you, this was delightful. 
uh, right all the time. Back at you. Thank you. I uh, I wish you well in any of the creative endeavors you come Thank across you. and keep inspiring. You inspire me. I'm sure you'll inspire a whole generation of young people. But I urge our viewers really to get a sense of you by looking at your work and understanding what you've done. I truly believe that what you've done represents you very, very deeply. Mm, so thank, thank you. you for being our Monica.